Moore here from Learn to Paint Academy. Welcome to my studio for this week's art studio chat. This week we're going to talk about how to improve your painting through analyzing your own work. So because I run the Learn to Paint Academy, we've got thousands of students that have come through our courses and so on. I get requests all the time for feedback and critiques of people's paintings. Now, it's just not possible for me to give detailed feedbacks and critiques of everyone's paintings uh, because that's all I do all day, you know, is, is spend time analyzing and, and giving feedback. So I, I tend to give basic sort of feedback and usually one point for improvement uh, to, to help people, you know, constantly improve. What's more valuable than getting feedback and critique from a third person, third party person like myself or anyone else is being able to give yourself critique and feedback and analyze your painting so that you understand what's working, what's not, and what you can improve to make this a better painting, but also what you can improve on and focus on to make you a better painter for all the paintings you do in the future. And that I think is the far more valuable skill or way of getting feedback is self-feedback, not feedback from another artist like myself, um, even though I, I teach all the courses and so on, um, you're far better to know how to analyze your own paintings than to, to seek feedback from others. I was in a workshop when I basically started painting by a very, very well-known artist. And um, the workshop, I didn't get a lot out of the workshop because of the way it was structured and so on. But he said one thing which has stuck in my mind ever since, and it's been the guiding principle for me as I move forward and learn and develop. And that thing that he said was, let the painting be your teacher, right? So you need to learn the skills, the fundamentals, but then you need to practice them. And each painting you do becomes the teacher and gives you the feedback that you need for you to be able to improve and know which direction to go in, what new skills you need to acquire and so on. So if we have a look at this painting here, this is one that I'm, um, I've am i been working on and I'm not sure that I'll finish it, I don't know. Uh, there's something about it that's not working. And so I've been looking at it and trying to work it out and I'm sure that plenty of you will have your own opinions about that. It's nowhere near finished. Um, it's a figurative uh, painting on a beach um, from a photo of my wife, uh, it's sort of utilizing the style of one of my favorite artists, Robert Hagen. So um, obviously he's an influence on me and uh, it's just not quite right. And, and there's a few things that I can identify that perhaps aren't working in it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the computer and I'll talk you through how I'll analyze this painting and, and I'll be looking for two or three things that I can do to improve this painting. So let's go to the computer and have a good look at this painting and by me showing you how I analyze it, you can learn how to start analyzing your painting. Okay, so I'm at the computer now and we're going to talk about how to critique your own paintings and I'm gonna use my painting that I just showed you for the critique. So. What I like to do when I look at my own paintings and critique them, sometimes I put them away and don't look at them for a while. Um, so this particular one that you see on the screen is a painting I was doing of a picture of my wife um, on the local beach. And I've sort of let it sit for a while. And this will be the first time I've really sort of given it any critical thought before I progress further and do any more work on it. So what I tend to do is I have a couple of different ways of analyzing or critiquing my own paintings. And I just want to walk you through those, um, through those points, and then we'll go and uh, we'll break it down a bit further as well. So the first thing is, does the overall composition work? I think that's the starting point. And if your composition is wrong, then no amount of fixing other things is going to make much difference. So you need to have a pleasing composition, you know, a good subject to paint. Um, and understand a little bit about composition design uh, and how to create a, a composition that really engages the viewer, engages their eye and their movement through the painting. And as part of composition, of course, you have a whole lot of other aspects, uh, but it's about having major shapes placed in the right place on the canvas and understanding some of the compositional design elements, which we'll get into in further videos. But that's the very first thing I look at is is the composition working? Um, so we'll consider that when we have a close look at this painting. The next thing is the center of interest. And one of the things that lacks, especially in landscape painting, is a center of interest, something that's really the focal point uh, of the painting, because you, you do need a focal point for the eye to rest 
you know, somewhere within the painting. Now, in, in a portrait, that's pretty easy to work out what that is. It's the face, right, um, of the portrait. If you're doing figurative work, so putting figures of people into landscapes or seascapes or other scenes, then the figure is important you know, as the center of interest. So you want to look at your painting and say, do I have a, a definite center of interest? Is there one, you know? Uh, and if there's not, then perhaps deciding what's going to be and, and making sure that that is, you know, obvious, the center of interest. And with that center of interest, you then need to bring that into focus. So sharper edges, a little bit more contrast in the values, um, stronger colors possibly. And uh, the details tend to be, greater on the center of interest than in the background areas. So a bit more detail and perhaps edges, you know, some of the edges uh, on a piece or the center of interest should probably be a little bit sharper. And, and in the things that you don't want the eye to rest on or to stand out, you have softer edges, okay? So that's the next thing I consider. Is there a good center of interest? Um, and is it in enough focus with enough detail to, to draw the eye to it? The third thing I look at is values. So is there an underlying value structure in the painting? Because values give a sense of realism, um, or depth in a painting. So we'd look at values, and I'll show you a way to do that. But also, is there color harmony uh, within the painting? You know, is there a harmonious color structure within the painting? And then the other thing I look at, then number four, is the level of abstraction to details. Uh, if you have a painting that's highly detailed in every single area of the painting, right, every square inch of the painting, it's got the same level of detail, then it's a difficult painting for the eye to sort of rest on and, and to move through. But if you, and similarly, if you have all abstraction, you know, then it can be also difficult to sort of understand the piece and, and know where to look. So having a balance between the level of abstraction and details. And again, that can tie back in with your center of interest. And then the last thing I look at is, is there sort of movement or rhythm in the painting? You know, does it flow? Is there a little bit of life and energy in the painting? Or is it, you know, do you have it too tight? Maybe it's so detailed and so rigid and so tight that it just doesn't feel right, you know? So you need to look at uh, the level of looseness to tightness, if, if that makes sense. Uh, and I find a lot of beginners are very rigid and very tight. So you want to think about how you can loosen up your painting if you need to. Um, don't, you know, draw out a perfect picture and then color in between the lines. So that would make a very tight painting. Uh, but if you have a little bit of looseness, then it gives the painting a little bit more rhythm and movement and, and uh, it feels better to look at a painting like that, generally speaking. So they're the five sort of considerations that I go through. And uh, I'll come back to that values picture in a moment. But the other thing is, I ask myself these questions because you know what I've just gone through, they're technical aspects of a painting. But Painting is not just about the technical things. It's also about how it makes you feel. It's the emotive component of it as well. So one thing I always ask myself, you know, am I happy with it? Does it feel good? Did I, you know, am I overall just happy with the painting, right? So that's a good question to ask yourself. Um, and then did you have fun? I and mean, did you enjoy doing the painting? Because at the end of the day, unless you're a professional artist, isn't that what it's all about? Having fun and enjoying it? If you're doing it as a hobby, as a stress relief or you know, art therapy or whatever, then really the number one criteria for assessing your painting is if you had fun and enjoyed doing it. And you know, I find a lot of people get too uptight about the outcome of their painting as opposed to enjoying the journey of it. They're all focused on the end goal right, of creating a masterpiece. Well, if you put that to one side and, and just immerse yourself in the enjoyment and fun, then you get a lot more out of painting. You really will. So the next question I'd ask myself is, what is one thing that I did well? It's important that you analyze or, or, or give acknowledgement to something that you did well in the painting. I really believe that. Uh, and then the next thing is, well, what is one thing I could improve either in this painting or for future paintings? Okay. So if I can take away one thing that I thought I did really well and one thing that I can improve, and I can do that with every painting that I do, right? Then within a year or two, you'll start to see dramatic improvement from that. Um, so you, when you when you find something that's one thing you could improve, then maybe you go and you do a, a course on that. Maybe you, you decide that your value structure is not good enough, right? So then you go and study values and um, you, get, you, you increase your skills around that. And over the next half dozen paintings, you 
gradually get better and better with your values. Uh, so this is why this is an important question to ask. So what is one thing you did well? What is one thing you could improve? They're key questions um, for improving or critiquing and improving your own painting. And then lastly, it's, you know, well, would you put it on your wall? You know, if, if it was a finished painting, you had it framed up, would you be happy to put it on your wall? And um, if you're not, then why are you doing paintings that you're not happy to put up on your own wall, right? Uh, you know, that ties back in with, are you happy with it and did you have fun and enjoyment? So they're the sort of questions that I go through. This set of questions more emotive. The previous set of questions, obviously, is more technical, um, more of a technical skills side of, of painting. So let's go and have a closer look at this painting and um, we'll see how we've gone. Okay, so here's our painting here. And um, I'd say it's probably 70 to 80% finished. And I got to a certain point with it and I just thought, oh, I don't know that it's working, you know, and I couldn't quite put my finger on what the issue may be. So I put it aside and, and you know, this is probably three months later I'm now, or two months later, I'm now um, having another look at it, right? So reassessing it. And so the painting itself is done in the Romantic Impressionist sort of style after Robert Hagen. So Robert Hagen's an Australian artist who uh, does Romantic Impressionism, uh, figurative work in landscapes in particular, and been a big influence on my painting. You know, I've, somebody I've, I've greatly admired. So um, in, in that style, the, the, the figure in this particular painting is uh, a photo from, of my wife that I took. And uh, the beach is, you know, just made up scene pretty much from my knowledge of beaches and so on. So the first thing is the question we asked before. So we're looking at the technical side of things. Does the overall composition work? Okay, so that's a good question to ask. And so there's a few things we can look at with composition. If I take my uh, orange pen here. <coughs> and um, the first thing I always look at is where's that horizon line? Let me thicken up that line. Where's that horizon line? And you know, with a seascape, it's pretty obvious. There's a horizon line there. Now, um, compositionally, if I have a look at, if I just start to divide up that space from there to there, one of the things we want to avoid is obviously having that at the 50% mark. And right at the moment, that is very, very close to the 50% mark. Okay, if you have a look, at the distance from there to there, that line there. 50% is probably about there, right? That second line. So that horizon line may be a touch too high, potentially. Um, so that could be one of the reasons why I'm thinking to myself, oh, there's something that's just not quite right. Uh, it could be because of the horizon line. So I'm just looking at composition at the moment. Then the other thing is, if I take a, um, let's take a bright yellow, this figure here from the photo of my wife, is that the right size for this size canvas? That's the other question I'd ask. What if I'd done the figure maybe a little bit smaller? Would that have worked better? Right, and then putting the reflections of her in the water about that size. Um, would that have been better composition? So that's what we've got to ask ourselves. Um, and there's the head there. Maybe, maybe not. Um, actually, I've got that around about the same size, so the head would be there. She's probably going to not be happy I've made her a bit fatter, but anyway. <laughs> She's not fat at all. Um, so perhaps that's one of the things that's bothering me is that it's probably just a touch too large in there, or it's such a dominating figure there that... Uh, it's probably overbalanced. Let me just remove all that yellow. You see how she's a really large aspect of the painting. There's nothing sort of counterbalancing it. I'll put these seagulls in here to try and counterweight um, the figure. So I think perhaps it's probably just a touch too big. So there's a couple of compositional things um, for you. I've got these rocks here to sort of stop the eye going that way. I want the eye to really come in through here and up around the figure and then down and back into the painting like that. So we can keep the eye going in a sort of circular motion and, and these rocks here stop the eye going out that way. Okay, um, so 
you've got this sort of entry point in through the bottom here and then it up and around the figure is kind of what I was looking for. I put these little boats over here again to stop the eye racing out along the horizon line and these rocks here to stop the eye coming out that way. Okay, so I think from a compositional point of view, it kind of works. Horizon line a touch too high, and perhaps she's a touch too big, perhaps for the overall size of the painting. Um, we'll see when I I'll work on her and, and develop her up further, and we'll see um, how that comes about. Okay. Next thing is, is there a center of interest? Well, I think it's pretty obvious in this one that there is a definite center of interest. Uh, now, because this painting's only 80% done. I'll just get rid of some of these. 70 to 80 percent done, I think I said. Um, so it's not finished, right? So is there a center of interest? Obviously, the figure is the center of interest. But when we look at our questions, you know, we answer the is there one? Yes, there is. Is it in focus and it does it have, does it have sufficient level of detail? And that's probably where I need to go to work. Um, is it in focus? I mean, if you look at this upper body section, probably not, right? Uh, there's not enough detail in the hair there the face I, I don't like doing faces but i could put just a little bit more work in there um the shadowing underneath the dress here and the highlighting on this side needs work and um got some soft edges through this arm here so i need to make those edges a little bit you know firmer a little bit harder um a little bit more highlight a little bit more contrast so there is a definite center of interest, but I think there's work to be done on here. And a little bit hard with some of the transition between the darks and the lights in here. And, um, you know, so details and bringing it more into focus, I think, is what the center of interest needs. So I'm good. it's good that there is a definite center of interest. It's a painting about the figure. Uh, but the, the level of detail and focus on that center of interest is probably not quite there yet. So when we look at values, values are darkness to lightness. And if you don't yet understand values, then um, check out our color mixing course and some of our other courses where we talk about values. But values are pretty important to, <coughs> pardon me, to your overall painting success. If you're trying to paint any level of realism, if you're completely abstract, then values are less important, although some would argue they're still pretty important. Um, if you're just a complete colorist, then maybe they're not important, right? But for any level of realism, values help create a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional surface. And so the best way to, to identify the values structure in your painting is to do what I've done and just turn it into a black and white uh, painting. So you can use any photo editing tool to do that. So when we look at this values here, this is what I would call a fairly tightly grouped value structure. So there's not a huge amount of contrast between darks and lights. Uh, the darks and the lights are closer together than in some paintings and perhaps a little bit too close together. So if you look at this figure, we want her to really pop out of the painting, right? So at the moment, she's not. She The values within the figure here are so similar to the rest of the painting that she's sort of sitting in the painting and I wanted to draw her out more. So the way I'll draw her out more is to get more contrast between darks and lights. So if you look at this arm here, the darks versus the lights in the arm, there's not a lot of contrast there. Very close in value. In the hair here, the highlights versus the, um, you know, the darker parts, not a lot of contrast. And in the upper body here, um, there's, there's just not a lot of highlight, highlight contrast. So we need to get darker darks and lighter lights into uh, this figure. Now down in the lower part of the dress, you can see I've got the dark side and the light side working well together, but still I think I can really improve the values within the figure, okay? Now the rest of it is reasonably good, reasonably good. Uh, this is our darkest dark, this rock on the left-hand side here, and maybe a little bit in here. And I think I could probably introduce a little bit more contrast into the darks. So pull out my darks a little bit more in here and maybe in the shadow as well. Uh, the rest of it is reasonably good. Um, you can see when you switch to a black and white version, you can see whether your horizon line edge is too hard or not. And it's not bad. It's a little bit hard through here. I might like to soften 
that horizon line so that there's less of a hard edge between the lower part of the sky and, and the ocean there uh, because those hard edges will draw the eye and we don't want the eye being drawn out to the distant part of the painting so much. So yeah, values wise, it's not too bad, but I do believe I can create greater contrast within the figure. And by doing so, my darks will get darker, my highlights will get brighter and they'll pop more and, and it'll make her stand out a little bit more in this painting. So that's a key area for me to go and work on. Okay, so the next thing is abstraction to details. Um, and I think, you know, overall in this painting, we do have some good abstract areas, especially in the sky, like these clouds. I haven't tried to really paint accurate clouds in here. Uh, they're fairly abstract and just quite loose. And, and they're soft. They're sitting into the, uh, into the painting. So I haven't really tried to create detailed clouds. They're quite abstract. I'm happy with that. I've got more detail if you look into these rock, rocky areas here in the water here. And really that's where you want your details and, and more so in the center of interest. So I'm quite happy with the, you know, the water areas abstract and the clouds are abstract because that's all in the distance. And I've got more details in the foreground. So I think I've got a reasonable balance between the two and I'm happy with that. So I'm not going to put much focus into that. I prefer to put more focus into, as we said previously, uh, the values within the figure and the details within the figure, etc. So that leaves us with movement and rhythm and you know looseness versus tight. Now it's no secret that I paint fairly loose. Uh, I don't do a lot of detail work. However, I think this painting is going to demand that more detail within the painting and uh, within the figure. So just by detailing her up and leaving everything else fairly loose, I think the balance will be right. And there is good sort of movement for the eye through the painting. I think from a compositional point of view, the movement and the rhythm is quite good in this painting. So I'm happy with all that. So, um, so out of that, I think there may be a compositional error, which is the figure's a little bit too big, the horizon line a little bit too high. Um, the next thing is the center of interest needs more focus, needs more detail, needs more contrast. So making the values stronger. There is good color harmony, which comes about through using a limited palette. So I'm happy with that. There's good abstraction versus detail and looseness versus tightness is, is definitely um, all good. So that leads us to the second part of our questioning. Am I happy with it? And, you know, at the moment I'm reasonably happy with it but I think there's work to do so I was happy doing it I enjoyed doing it so that's the next thing is did I have fun yeah I did I love it I love painting so and I enjoyed this one even though I knew it wasn't quite right uh, you know I enjoyed doing it and, and that's important um, just notice one other area is like this arm shoulder dress area here and probably that one as well that needs re-engineering it kind of looks a bit awkward, like she's got her shoulder raised and she's hunching. So there's a little bit of technical issue with my drawing side of the figure. So I just noticed that while I was talking to you. Um, so what is one thing that I did well? Well, I think one thing that I did well is I've got the proportions for the figure reasonably, reasonably good. Okay, so um, if that was the top of the figure, well, it is the top, and that's the bottom, and we split that in half there, and then we split that in half again, so that gives us quarters, and then we split that in half again, which gives us eights, right? So usually, a figure should be eight times the size of the head, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there, pretty much spot on. I've got the overall proportions. Apart from that shoulder area there and that arm, um, and I know why I did that. I sort of carved out a little bit there with the sky. But yeah, I think proportionally, I've got a uh, proportions right. And, and I struggle to get, you know, the figures right. I, I'd love to be a better figurey painter, but I do have a challenge with the drawing with me personally um, so if, you know what I did well with this one I think I got the drawing reasonably right in terms of the overall size and structure of of the figure so I'm happy with that um, what's one thing I could improve well as I said previously uh, I think uh, getting more focus and detail on her so in the figure so a little bit more attention to the detail which is not something that I do naturally is something for me to work on if I want to continue doing figurative work like this so I'm, 
I know what I did well. I know what I can improve. What I put it on my wall? Yeah, I think when this is finished in a nice frame, it is something I'd probably put on my wall. And um, as I said earlier, why would you paint something that you wouldn't put on your wall anyway, right? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with it overall. So let's just recap. So just to recap, um, the things that I look at, first of all, the technical things, the overall composition, does it work? Then I'll look at, is there a center of interest? Um, and is it in enough focus and detail to draw the eye to it? Then we looked at values and color harmony. Um, if you use a limited palette, then you should always have good color harmony. We looked at abstraction versus details and, and having different areas of the painting in abstraction and different areas and details. And then we looked at movement and rhythm. Um, so there are technical considerations. And then we thought, okay, what about the emotive sort of considerations of a painting? Um, you know, first question was, am I happy with it? Yes, I am. Good. Um, did I have fun and enjoy painting it? Real key question. And of course I did. What is one thing you did well? So we identified that. And what is one thing you could improve? And I think those two, question three and four there, they're the big takeaways, I think, from when you do your own analysis and critique of your own painting. And then lastly, will we put it on our wall? And um, I think we, you know, I, I decided that, yeah, this is the type of painting I like. And if I can get it right, framed up, I would be happy to put it on my wall. So that's how I go about critiquing my own paintings. And it's something I've been doing since I really started. And uh, it's definitely helped me. And, and I offer this to you as suggestions to help you learn to improve your own painting. Okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed my assessment of this painting here and you learnt what the thinking process is that I go through whenever I'm analysing a painting. Take that on board and what I recommend is that you get two or three of your most recent paintings and you do exactly what I did in the uh, when we were on the computer. It's important to identify what you've done well, right? That's important because you have to give yourself some credit. You can't just look for what you've done badly. And then really think about those different categories that I talked about. So, you know, overall composition, color scheme, those type of things. Think about your paintings and list down two or three things that you think you might be able to improve the painting um, on. And they also might be the very things that you need to get a greater understanding and more knowledge on. So for instance, um, you know, values might be the issue. You may have identified uh, in your painting that you haven't got the right value structure and you need to get more knowledge around how to work with values. That could be a thing. So you write that down and then you can then chart out or plan out a, a learning path for yourself to improve on those skills that you've identified. So I hope that helps. Most important thing I think when you're learning to paint is you, yes, go out and get all the skills and fundamentals, but then practice and use each painting that you do as the teacher of how you can improve your own painting and improve yourself as an artist. Hope that helps. Look forward to seeing you next time in Art Studio Chat. Cheers.